Congratulations, Graham, Tony, Tony, and Claudio. Desmond, I looked at that video and I didn't realize how old you were because you could pass the ball back to the keeper and it was legal. <laughs> Congratulations to Desmond and his family for this wonderful achievement in entering the U.S. Soccer Hall of Fame. It is an honor and privilege for me to say a few words about my good friend Desmond Armstrong. I first came up against Desmond in a youth club match in suburban Maryland in the early 1980s. Right away, there was an uh, instant respect between us. He said to me at the start of the game, what's up, Johnny? I replied back, good, Desi, how are you doing? Seconds later, Bruce Murray played me a through ball, and I had a head start on Desmond. But within an instant, he was right up my back, not giving me an inch. Everyone knew Desmond was a tremendous athlete and competitor. He was also so elegant when he moved, almost effortless. He read the game so well and was very composed on the ball. A couple, couple years later, we met again when Maryland played Duke. Unfortunately, Desmond always seemed to be matched up with me. It was in the summer of 1986 when I really got to know Desmond Armstrong, the person and the player. He joined our team, the Spartans, which was coached by my father. We had some very talented players in that team and a few other U.S. internationals like John Stonemeyer, Bruce Murray, Scott Snyder, Sonny Askew, and we also had a couple of Canadian internationals with Mike Reynolds and Freddie Thompson. But there was one special player that Desmond and I really enjoyed playing with, and that guy's name was Nigerian Silvano Oriaki. He was a very humble and unassuming veteran of this very young and mostly American team. Desmond and I hung on, on his every word. As many of you know, Desmond likes to smile, and I've never seen a teammate smile as much at practice than Desmond Armstrong. You could tell that he was in his element with our training style and approach to the game that we had with the Spartans. We went on to win the, the, the Amateur Cup that year and also the gold medal in the U.S. Soccer Festival in Houston. One of the reasons Desmond asked me to speak today was to appreciate a major influence in his career, and that was my father. There was no kick and run on our team. He wanted thinkers with imagination and courage, courage to play your way out of trouble instead of clearing the ball upfield. He did not worry about mistakes as long as you could see that you were trying to do the right thing. He would encourage us to use dummies and back heels in any part of the field if you thought it made sense. This approach really appealed to Desmond, and you could see this incredible athlete becoming a spectacular player in no time. Desmond, my father would be so proud of you today and so very happy for you and your family. He was impressed how you carried yourself on and off the field. He recognized how you would make a difference in your communities with groups like DC Scores and Soccer in the Streets and then a couple. You told me last week that his belief in you gave you the confidence to move forward into the next facet of your Hall of Fame career. I feel very fortunate to have shared many great moments with you as a teammate and as a friend. I am enamored of how you've given back to the game and help so many young people along the way. You are an incredible son, husband, father, and a role model to all of us. It is with great humility I present to you Desmond Armstrong.
deeply humbled. You know, when you get to be my age, you start to look back on your career and you think to yourself, did I actually do anything? I was with the national team for a number of years during a time period where uh, we were not recognized. Even the women's uh, team at the time in the 1990s, 91, they were not really recognized until they struck gold. And I was a big fan, a big fan of their success, which was a part of our success, the men's team, and also for the uh, success of soccer in this country. I had a lot of things I was gonna say, but when you get here, it sort of gets out of your mind. So thankful. My family is here. My mother, my father, and my brother. Not to mention all my kids. I got a whole team over there. <laughs> Let me qualify that. I got a whole indoor team. <laughs> So as I gather myself, I want to give proper respect to all the other inductees. To Tony, to Graham, and to Tony Miola, who was a teammate of mine, who was behind me, encouraging me to go forward, even when Coach Gansler told me to stay in my position. <laughs> Coach Gansler doesn't realize I used to be a, a wing midfielder. And he converted me into a marking back because I was a great athlete. And I really was a great athlete and not so much a great player. I think that as I look at my career, as mentioned here, John Kerr Sr. was the one that really tapped me. He was the one that saw my raw ability because I was a decent athlete. I could run, I could kick a ball. And for many years, up through the ranks of the youth national team, I got turned down about six times, meaning I never got selected six times in a row ever since I was about 15. And when I got to the Fairfax Spartans, I'm not certain how I got there, but John Kerr saw something in me. And he encouraged me to explore that, especially with the training methods that he was employing. And I say that I'm really indebted to him in terms of my international career because he was the one that got me on that platform in order to be noticed by Bob Gansler at the Amateur Cup. It was the finals. I, I, I actually scored in the uh, semifinal game two goals and scored one in the final because I was a, I was a forward on that team, Coach Gansler. <laughs> <laughs> and so because I was on that, that platform, as presented by John Kerr and the Fairfax Spartans. We had tremendous, tremendous players. John Kerr just mentioned them. I mean, they were tremendous. And I was really in awe of being in that group, much like the way I feel today, to be included in this group of individuals who have actually preceded me, who have actually laid their footprint, if you will, on the game nationally as well as internationally, and those that will come behind us that will look towards us in regards to this legacy. The real big thing in my mind that came with the introduction and the call to be on the induction list was legacy. That I was not forgotten, myself and really the generation that I represent. That we were traveling all over the world, you know, just like the women. We were traveling and like you had like you know, five stops from Washington to New York because there was no money in the budget. We used to travel in all these places. The gear that we had back then, I mean, the gear they get right now is like unbelievable. But for us, it was just a white, you know, T-shirt with no U.S. soccer emblem on it. And we used to fight over that stuff. We used to steal those things and, and walk around in the mall like, you know, I'm a national team player with a white T-shirt that you can get down there at, you know, Walmart. You know. It was a special time. And it was in between, it's real. I mean, it, exactly. <laughs> it was during a time when, you know, it was a gap. NASL, the professional league at that time, had ended. 
and then MLS had not started, and a lot of us are applying our trade indoor and outdoor. Jimmy Banks, who was mentioned and seen in the video, Jimmy was, he was a year-round player. He played indoor. As soon as he stopped indoor, he went and played outdoor. As soon as he stopped outdoor, he came back and played indoor. He did that for a good five years, had two hernia operations because of that, and it was a situation where we were doing all of that because of the love that we had and the passion that we had for the sport. And a lot of that passion for me was really exemplified in the team that we played on with the Fairfax Spartans, which again, pushed me to the international stage. Now, how did I get started? I'm, I'm a late bloomer. I didn't start playing soccer until I was 12 years old. And we actually moved. And I got to give tribute and respect and honor to my folks. I was born here in DC, George Washington Hospital. And we moved out of Southeast DC. And if anybody knows about Southeast DC, it was known as the murder capital of the world at one point, not when I was living there. My parents moved us out of there into the suburbs of Maryland. And then we you know, were the first, and this is a different time period, okay? So I may not be politically correct, but we were the first black family in an all white neighborhood. And we moved right beside a KKK member, okay? I mean, it was, that's what it was. And so I had never really been in an all-white environment. I had come from an all-black environment, and I never knew what soccer was until, and this is how I got started. I was looking through the, uh, the window of my uh, kitchen window, uh, and behind us was an elementary school playground, and I saw some white kids playing basketball. And in my arrogance, I said, ah, this white boys can't play no basketball. Let me go out there and show them how to play basketball. So I went out there, and I challenged a kid to a basketball game, and we played the best two out of three. And so I won the first game, and the second game he won, and the third game was up to a last shot. And I missed it. He picked it up, rebound, score. He wins. I started crying. I, I just couldn't believe I, I, I just lost to a white guy. <laughs> and while I'm crying, he and his buddies started laughing. And so where I came from, I came from a really, really, really rough neighborhood. I was, I was known as Cry Baby Armstrong. I used to get my butt beat every day. And so when I started crying, you know, he started laughing, and so I went over and I beat him up. <laughs> so he went home, and his father brought him back. I was still on the playground playing basketball. His father brought him back, and his father says, my son will never come home crying from a fight, so he made us fight again. And so we fought, and then afterwards we shook hands, and we became best friends. And that individual, that, that father, was my first soccer coach. He says, why don't you take this energy, come back here tomorrow, and join my soccer team. And that was in Wheaton, Maryland. And then from there, I encountered John Kerr, Bruce Murray. At the time, Bruce Murray was just a spoiled brat. I mean, he was horrible. I hated him. He was so good. I mean, I couldn't stand him. I couldn't stand the guy. He was so good. And he used to like beat you and laugh at you. And I used to, I used to hate that. And so, went through the ranks. And I was always known as a good athlete. But again, got to that team after my college career, and then went on from there. And there are a lot of coaches that were part of my success. And what I consider my success is the inclusion of my presence with the national team. I wasn't the best player, I was, I was good. And so again, to be included here is just such a great honor. It's just, it's really wonderful, it, it really is. I can share this with my family. For me, legacy means that success is what is left behind, what is remembered after you have gone, after you have passed. And in those moments when you're by yourself and you're getting up in age and your kids are starting to look you straight in the eye and you say to yourself, what have I actually done that will be remembered? I can look back now and say, man, by way of soccer, it's this, I'm included in such an illustrious group of individuals, the way I was included on the Fairfax Spartans and also with the Olympic team and the national team that played in the World Cup in 1990 for the first time in 40 years. I mean, I was included, and I'm included now. My other legacy, though, which means so much to me, is that family that the Lord has blessed me with. We have seven kids, I have four girls, not by myself, and three boys. We have seven. And they were here with us today, and I'm just so, so pleased to share it with them, as well as my mother, my father, and my brother who are here. And like I said, I'm from DC. You're just, you're, I gotta tell you, 
it's a good thing that I couldn't let my whole family come up in this piece because we just be all up in here, you know. Go, Desmond, you know, one of those. So I've got like the, I got like the second two rows. That's just my crew over there, second two rows. But I'm so, so pleased and so, so very happy. As a tribute to John Kerr Sr., I wanted to use this time to recognize him because of his impact in my life and thus as he pushed me on to greater things in terms of me standing here today. I wanted John Curry Jr. to come and present me and I'm so thankful, John, that you accepted and that you came and Bruce, that you're here as well because it is a testimony to the legacy that he had put into us that lives on now within the context of the platform of soccer and the growth of soccer in this country, even as we wait for the game tonight. We had so many national team players come from that very one team, and it is a tribute to him and a testament to his passion and joy for the sport. So soccer-wise, that's what I want to say to you. What I want to close with is this. For my family, I stopped playing at a pretty young age nowadays. I mean, back then it was like I was ancient at 29. But today's age, 29, is just, you know, you just get into your prime. And I stopped in my prime because I, I took a conscious decision to focus on my family. I knew that I'd be traveling, I had a chance to do television, and, you know, the television thing, Dave, was one of those things. Dave Johnson and I used to work together when I first started doing TV. And we had a contract offer from, I did had a contract offer from Home Team Sports, which is Fox now. And they were going to pay me, like, you know, pay me to travel. And I was like, well, how much are you going to pay? And they told me. And I was like, well, shoot, I can go back and play and keep traveling to make more money. And I just retired, so I'm not going to do that. So I made a conscious decision to stay home and to grow my family. We've gone through a lot of difficult times uh, in that growth, especially when you have seven kids and you're not Catholic. And so... <laughs> I can look out and say that today, right here, the greatest thing for me is, is really my family. I'm not negating the soccer. It has been wonderful. It was a great career. And I am truly thankful to be included. I really am. I'm truly thankful. But my legacy really is when I look out there and I see my kids. When I see the reflection of myself in them, and also the imprint that I've made in terms of the game, that is the greatest thing for me. So I'm so, so thankful. I'm thanking you guys for listening to me during this time. I'm gonna wear my jacket with pride. Please send the pictures to me. And I, wanna, I wanna put them up and I wanna show my kids, hey, right here, you are a part of this right here in terms of soccer, but more importantly, you are at Armstrong's. And my folks, my brother, thank you so much for coming to support me. Thank you so much.